In this lesson, we'll learn how to utilize the selection tools inside the Sketchbook Designer to make pixel selections. All right, so we spent quite a bit of time working with vectors and figuring out how to select and manipulate those vector curves. Now, um, back here on our paint layers, remember, we're working with pixels. And if you're doing any kind of drawing or painting, then at some point, you're going to want to limit the area that you can draw or paint in by making a selection. Um, now, there are a number of different selection tools up here inside the toolbar. And you can see I've got um, one of them currently selected right now. And this is the lasso tool and the keyboard shortcut for that is L so um, with the lasso tool that's going to allow us to if I just come over here to the side of our manga character it's going to allow us to draw in our custom selections now we don't have to worry about completing the selection if I come over here and stop right here you'll see it just takes the shortest path to the place where we started drawing that selection. So um, now I also have my attribute editor open here. So um, there's a few different modes that we can actually utilize the selection tools in. Um, and you can see here I've got the first one currently selected. So um, if we wanted to add to this selection, we could switch it over to this mode here. And I could come over and maybe come in and draw in some additions to that selection, just like so. We could also come in and subtract an area from the selection, sort of like that. Again, using this third button here. Now, we also have the option to anti-alias our selections. And um, if you're familiar with raster image editing applications, then uh new terminology for you. It helps us to get a more precise selection by basically adding a little bit of transparency in along the edges where we need to. So we don't get a nice jagged pixel edge in areas. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and clear out this selection by hitting control D on my keyboard. Um, you can also come in here under the edit menu and just choose deselect right here. Now, just like many other applications, if we want to select the entirety of our canvas, we can do that by hitting Control A, and that option is also under the Edit menu right here. So uh, let's go ahead and deselect that here. Now, we've used these three buttons here to add to and remove from our selection, but we can do that with keyboard shortcuts as well. So if I draw in a selection like this, and now I want to add information to that, I'm going to hold down the Shift key. And you'll see here that I can just simply add in whatever information I want to add. And you'll notice that the button here switches automatically. Now when I release the shift key, it switches back to our normal selection mode. So um, if I make a selection without a keyboard shortcut held down, it's going to remove my previous selection. So I'm going to undo that with a control Z really quickly here. Now, if we wanted to subtract from our selection, again, we can do that with a keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to hold down the alt key on my keyboard. And you can see here that we can now remove information from our selection as well. Now, this is going to be, this is going to work pretty much the same with several of our selection tools. So let's take a look at a few more of those here. Let me hit Control D to deselect that information. Let's just go to this one right here. This is the Polyline Marquee Selection Tool. And again, with this one, it's going to allow us to draw sort of a geometric selection. And whenever we're done, all we need to do is double click. So if that's my selection and I'm ready to complete that, my next place where I click, I would just double click. And you can see that it completes our selection. Now again, just as with the lasso selection tool, we can actually come in here and add to the selection by holding down shift. Or we can subtract from the selection by holding down the alt key on our keyboard. Just like so. So that is the Polyline Marquee Selection. So I'll go ahead and clear that out with a Control D. And let's go ahead and grab the Circle Marquee here. So now that we're familiar with both the Lasso and the Polyline Marquee, uh, the Circle Marquee isn't going to be that much different, but it does add a few more controls over here inside the Attribute Editor. So um, in its basic form here, again, I'm anti-aliasing my selections. We can just come in and we can draw in an ellipse or a circle whichever we choose. Um, now, you may find it challenging at first if you're trying to draw a perfect circular selection uh, to get exactly that selection that you want. Now, we can come in and actually lock the aspect ratio. So whenever we click and drag, let me make sure I click that, there we go. Now I'm drawing perfect circles. 
And again, if we want to add to that, we can hold down the Shift key, subtract holding down the Alt key, just like so. So this is the circular marquee. Now, we also have one more option here. I'm going to clear that off with the Control D. We have this fixed size. So let me uncheck the lock aspect ratio option and select fixed size because th what this is going to allow us to do is make selections of a very specific size. So in this case, 100 by 100 pixels. So if I click, you can see here I didn't have to click and drag. All I did was click on my canvas and we've made this very specific selection. We can come over here and continue doing that. We can add to that. We can subtract by holding down Alt. Alright, great. Now if we wanted to adjust the size of our fixed selection, again, all we need to do is come over here and adjust these sliders. So maybe we wanted a 500 by 500 selection. There we go. So you can see here we made a much larger selection. Again, the circular marquee tool. This last one here is the rectangular marquee. So um, again, this is going to work very, very similar to the circular marquee. Again, we can come in and draw out our rectangles in whatever size we want, add to them with shift, subtract from them with alt to make exactly the selection we're looking for. Again, we can lock our aspect ratio if we are looking for maybe a perfectly symmetrical shape. In this case, uh, we can also come in and do a fixed size selection, in this case 100 by 100. So um, again, very, very similar to the circular marquee, only we're drawing rectangles or squares in this case. All right, great. Now you may notice this last button right up here next to the rectangular marquee. That's just simply going to clear your selection out. So if we come in and make some selections, we'll just add to the selection a bit here. We can come in and clear that out just like so. All right, fantastic. Now there's one last selection tool we're going to talk about in this lesson, and it's the magic wand tool here. So uh, magic wand is something that appears in several different applications. You may have used it before. Uh, this is going to basically sample based on color. So um, in this case, it's looking at all of our layers together here. So I'm on a paint layer right now that doesn't currently have any artwork on it. If I were to come in here and go ahead and click, it's looking again at the composited version of all these layers together. And maybe in this case, we wanted to come in on this paint one layer and actually paint a background. Now, this is actually a piece of artwork from our Copic, or Creating Copic Marker Illustrations and Sketchbook Pro course, and this is created with markers. So if we came in with just an airbrush or something right now and painted on that Paint One layer, you're going to be able to see it through the artwork above that, just because it's transparent in nature, and there's areas in that that uh, really don't have any pigment on them. So um, now to limit our area to paint, we can come in and make our selection. Again, anti-aliasing that so we can get as closely as possible and uh, basically not uh, have a little jagged edge up close to the character here. Um, we can set a tolerance. So um, let's come in here and we'll just kind of maybe try and select her legs. So um, right now if I go ahead and click with the magic wand, You'll see here that we can get a pretty good selection with that tolerance of 30. We're selecting just the pigment that was in her leg and not selecting that black line work around her leg. Now in this case, it didn't quite make the selection the way we'd like. So we want to probably ramp that tolerance up a little bit. Let's come in and make it again and you can see we've selected a little bit more. All right, great. So there we go. We've selected all of her skin tones there on her left leg. So um, now Sample contiguous here just means that we're going to sample areas that don't necessarily have to be touching. Uh, if we uncheck that, then all the areas selected would need to be together. And um, again, we've got this option here selected to sample all layers. And that's what's enabling us to uh, basically look at the composited version of all these layers that create this piece of artwork here. So um, now there's a couple other things I want to show you. Say we wanted to select the entire background. And now maybe we wanted to, let me just ramp that tolerance down a little bit. Now maybe we wanted to invert that selection. So uh, we wanted to, instead of selecting the background, we wanted to select her. So um, if we want, we could come up here to edit and just choose invert selection or use the 
control shift I and that's going to invert our selection so now when we go to paint you can see here we're only painting where the character is now in this case we have this little gap right here between her hip and her arm so uh, let's go ahead and see if we can't subtract that out I want to hold down the alt key and we're just going to click on that area and we'll subtract that and now when we go to paint we're not going to be painting in that area at all. So uh, maybe we wanted to move this layer to the very top of our layer stack so we could get a clear picture of kind of the area that we're painting. And let's go ahead and deselect. And we'll just hold our space bar and zoom in. And you can see that that's done a pretty fair job of painting only around the edges of the character herself. So uh, in this lesson we've learned about the various selection tools available to us inside of Sketchbook Designer so that we can make pixel-based selections. Alright great, let's go ahead and at this point move on to the next lesson and we're going to begin learning about transforming the data that sits on our canvas.